Okay, uh, hi and uh, welcome to the sixth lecture in the course Foundations of Software Technology at Linnaeus University. Uh, today we will talk about the Java collection classes, uh, that means the data structures that are available in the Java library. You have seen a few of them, the array list and the linked list already. Uh, the focus today will be um, the hash set and the tree set and we are interested in how they are implemented in order to better understand them and if we understand them we know how to use them and when to use them. Uh, in general I would say that hash, the, the set class and the maps class that we'll talk about today is very useful. I'm using them all the time when I'm programming. Uh, and you should know about them and you should know their properties and you should know how to use them in a good way. Certain uh, people are always using array list all the time. Uh, they will make a fool of themselves when they talk, when they start to work. Because people will think that they are a bit crazy or stupid. And that means when you are picking a data collection from the Java library, you should basically ask, you start by asking yourself what is the required properties of this data structure. Do you want to have them in a certain order? Do you want to have them no duplicates or things like this? Based on these properties you decide, okay, I want a list, a map or a stack or whatever you decide. And then the next question you ask yourself is what operations are most frequently used? Which are the ones that are crucial? That will help you to choose which implementation of these classes you're using. For example, an array-based list or a um, hash-based set or one of these. So ask yourself first properties uh, that gives you what data structure to use and then most frequently used operations that gives you what type of implementation of this particular data structure that you should pick. Uh, uh, the Java classes in the library forms a hierarchy. This is not a complete picture of it, but it's the most frequently used. Uh, uh, on top of it we have something, an, an interface. The one with rounded corners are interfaces. Uh, on top of it we have something called the collection. If you take a look at this interface you will see that it's method called add and remove. We could always add something to the data structure and remove something and ask it for its size. There's a number of things that works and makes sense for all data structures. Then they are dividing the data structures into list, queue and set and then we have various implementations of the different data structures like this. So for example, they, the list is implemented using an abstract class called abstract list. This is the base for all the different implementations that we are using. So we have talked about the array list and the linked list. They are all implemented using an abstract called abstract which, which implements the list interface. So this is the way they have structured it. This one, iterable, what does it mean? What properties does it, does it give? Come on. You can iterate over it. You can ask it for its iterator or you can use this short version of a for statement. So all the classes in the Java library, uh, they are iterable. That means you can ask them for an iterator and you can use for to iterate over all the elements. Uh, so the Java collection classes in the library, they are stored in a package called Java Util. They are all implementing iterable. Uh, there are a number of so-called sequential collection classes. What was the specific part with the sequential data structure? All elements have a position. You can, you can tell a sequential data structure, give me the element at position 3 or something like this. Uh, all of these guys are uh, sequential, array list, linked list, vector, deck uh, and stack. Uh, all classes in the library comes in two versions, a raw version where we can store anything and a generic version where we are using this type parameter to decide which type of elements to store in each individual uh, data structure. Which one are you supposed to use? Generic. The generic version, yes. Good. Uh, 
The topic for today is set implementations. Uh, Java comes with a set implementation. I show a few of the methods here. Uh, add the most important method here and the difference between uh, the sequential data structures is that add is not only adding an element, uh, it has also the requirement that it only adds thing if it's not already added. So if the second time you try to add the same element, it will be ignored. So uh, a set is a data structure that contains no duplicate elements. Uh, otherwise, you can ask it, do you contain a certain element? You can remove elements, you can do all the stuff that we are expecting from a data structure. But this property that it adds an element only uh, if it's not already added, uh, this is one that separates it from the other data structures. Boolean here, it means it will return true if you are actually adding something. If it is reacted, then it returns false. So you can use this return value to verify that this element was actually added. Yeah. Set usage. For example, if you want to make sure that you don't have any duplicate elements, for example, registered students in a course, we don't want the student to register twice on a course, uh, then it might be a good idea to store the students in a, in a set, because the, the second time the students try to register themselves, it will be ignored. Uh, often uh, we are using it also to count how many different whatever you have. For example, you will see in one of the assignments you will be asked to count how many different words there are in the text. And the idea is that you pick out the words and add them to a set. You pick out every word you see and you add it to a set. But every time you are adding the same word, the second time it will be ignored. So afterwards it will only contain all unique words in the text. So this is another useful area. Count how many different of something. Uh, you only have to do is to add them to a set and then ask the set for its size. Uh, from a set you will also realize that we, we expect it to be quick. They can be implemented much quicker than the sequ sequential data structure. So we are expecting add, contains and remove to work much quicker than in a sequential and in a list. When you are searching for something in a list, how does it proceed? Well, it starts in the beginning of the list and then it iterates over all the element until it finds it or not. You will see that it can be done uh, much faster. However, one drawback with a set is that it's not sequential. It doesn't have any positions. You cannot ask the set to give me an element at position 5 or something like this. Basically, it's a box. You put them into this one and you have no idea how they store it. Uh, Java comes with two set implementations. One is called hash set and the other one is called tree set. Both of them are implementing the set interface and you can use them like this. You create, in this case, a hash set. And you're adding a number of names. You ask it for its size. It will say 4. You add duplicate elements to it. That means you and us, Jens and Jesper one more time. You ask it for its size. It still says 4. It has here recognized that these one are duplicates and it has ignored your attempts to add them. Yes, a question? Yes, yes please. Uh, otherwise, apart from this property, adding them, uh, uh, adding a duplicate element will be reacted. It works very much like a list. You can ask it, does it contain a certain one? And you can remove elements from it like this. But you cannot ask on positions. They don't have any positions. Yeah, do you start to understand how it works? Good. Uh, a simple list implementation could be something like this. I am using an ordinary array list as my backup here. And when we want to add something to it, I start by checking, is it already there? If it is not, then I'm adding it. Do you see that this will have this duplicate property? It will recognize if we try to add something. Yeah. I'm saying here that the time complexity of this one is O of N. We will talk about time complexity in the next lecture. But it, it means that the time to perform this operation is proportional to the list size. The longer the list, the longer it will have to 
run through the list to see whether we already have it or not. And the same goes with contains. Uh, we could just ask the list, do you contain this element? But once again, we must iterate over the entire list to make sure that it's not there. Uh, so uh, add and contains, if we take this simple approach of implementing it, uh, uh, add contains a removal searches the list sequentially, time proportional to n, uh, where n is the list size. Uh, this is very costly, we can do it much better. I will show you two uh, approaches to implement ascent, which is much quicker than this one. The one is called, one is called hashing and the other one is called binary search trees. They are much, much faster. And this actually makes sense. When you start to have about million or billions of numbers, uh, this one is very slow. Uh, Java comes with three versions, hash set, tree set, and something called a linked hash set. This one is the quickest. However, no element ordering. If you are printing over it, they will come out in a random order. The tree set is slightly slower than the hash set, but they are ordered, the sets. When you are in, no matter what order you are inserting the strings, they will come out in alphabetic order when you're iterating. So it keeps the elements ordered in some way. And then we have the linked hash set. I will talk about this one later. But these are the two important ones, hash set and tree set. This one is faster, but they have no element ordering. This one is slightly slower, but keeps the element ordered. Hashing. Yeah. This picture is important. Yeah. We have an array of linked lists, and this array of linked lists is called the bucket list. We have each position has their own version of a linked list. And now I would like to add an element. It might be a student or whatever. And what I do first is to compute the hash value of the element. And the hash value is an integer, an integer representation for this particular object, whatever object it is. Then, based on this integer, I find, apply something called the hash function. And the hash function takes the integer and points out a position in the bucket here. So, I element, give a hash value. Hash value might be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And based on this hash value, we are saying, okay, the element should be inserted in uh -huh. uh, uh, so first, we are whatever we are inserting, we are associating it with a hash value, and then based on the hash value, we do the actual hashing, and it says, okay, it should be inserted into bucket 34. Then we go to bucket 34, iterate over this list here and insert it if it's not already there. And this we do for all the elements. We are associating them with a the hash value. We use the hash value to find a bucket and then we search through the list in this bucket. Uh, I have an example here. Assume a hash table for strings. We have a table with 64 buckets. We compute a hash value for a string by summing up the ASCII codes for each character. So this is the way I associate a string with a value. I compute, I add together the ASCII codes. Uh, and then we use the modulus operator, modulus 64, as our hash function. That means to say that it should be in bucket 34. So, example, if assume I would like to add hello, then the hash value would be 500. These are the ASCII codes for hello. Uh, then means I should insert it into bucket 52, since 500 modulus 64 is 52. And then I insert it into this bucket if it's not already added. So, I compute a value, get the, the ASCII, sum of ASCII codes, I apply the hash function, which was modulus in our case, and I look through the list here, do we have hello or not? If not, then we are adding it as a new element to this list. 
Understand how it works? Basically three steps. This one, this one, and walk through the list to search. Adding Jonas, give us a hash value, a bucket, insert Jonas in bucket 59 if not already added. Yeah. Assume now that the elements are evenly distributed across all buckets, that we manage to uh, give it a hash value that distributes them rather evenly over all the buckets. Also assume that the number of elements is about the same as the number of buckets. What is then the length of the list? We have the same number of elements as the same number of buckets and we manage to distribute them rather evenly. Then the list will only be of length one. On average, some might be two and some might be zero, but on average they will be one. That means we can find an element by doing one step, two step and walk a list of length one. In only three steps we can find an element. No matter if it's one million or one billion elements in the list. In only three computations we can decide we have seen this before or we have not seen it. This is hashing. Yeah, there are certain things that are crucial, evenly distributed across all bucket. Assume for example that I was mapping all the strings to the same number. Then they will end up in the same bucket, all strings. And the string will be a linked list of size, whatever. Then we haven't gained anything. The, it must be that they are evenly distributed and we have the same number of buckets as elements, roughly. Then in only three steps we can find an element or not. That is the basic idea. Questions at this point? Okay. How does it work? I can use uh, the Java uh, hash set. Uh, I can insert uh, any number of uh, strings in it and it will go through all these steps. I can insert any number of integers to it and it will also work. They have every element in Java is prepared for hashing. And it comes with that the object class have two methods, hash code and equal. So no matter you want it or not, all the objects in Java are prepared for hashing. They use this method, hash code, to give this number up here. And they use equals when they are traversing the list to see if we have it or not. So if you are implementing your own class, I will show an example, a student, and you would like to add students to a list and it should work, then you must override these methods. You must come up with a clever way of associating a student with a hash code. And you must come up with a clever way of identifying when two students are the same. But once you have overridden these methods, you can start to use the hash set method. The default implementation checks for object uh, uh, if they are the same object. So two strings created at two different points, although they contain the same letters, will be considered as two different objects. However, most of the classes in Java, strings and integer, they have overridden the methods already. So they are prepared for hashing. So if you implement your own class, if you like to store it in a hash set, you must remember that you must come up with your own definition of when are two students equal and associate it with a hash code. A good hash code is of course uh, give a wide distribution. You should not have that it's only two possible hash codes because then you will end up in only using two buckets. But uh, in my example that I will show you uh, here I compute the hash code. Well first of all I have a student uh, and I say that two students are uh, the same student if they have the same ID number. I don't care about the name. Many students can have the same name, but they are supposed to have a unique ID number. So on all parts of this, I'm focusing on the ID number. So basically down here, I'm saying that two students are equal if they have the same ID number. 
and down here I'm basing my hash code, I'm adding the ASCII values for the, all the characters in the ID number. So I'm focusing on the ID number in both cases. This will work. Did you understand it? So, similar objects here. Two objects are considered as similar by hash set if they have the same hash code and if they are equal according to equals. This one is used to make sure that they end up in the same bucket. Uh, this one is used to identify them as identical in the linked list. If only this one works and uh, two elements that you consider to be e uh, similar are ending up in different buckets, uh, then the equals method will not help you. They will not be there. So they are similar according to a hash set here if they have the same hash code and then they are equals according to this method. Uh, I will show a very simple hash set implementation. Uh, feel free to uh, look at the... You can download the Java code for the Java library and take a look at their hash set implementation. Uh, it is not that strange actually. You can also do the same for the array list. Uh, it's not a miracle. The code is readable apart from how they are computing the hash codes. They use some strange algorithm there, but apart from that, it uh, basically works the same way as I will outline it here. Anyway, uh, I am implementing a string hash set. That means a hash set that only works for strings. Uh, I am having an array of nodes. This is on my buckets and I'm keeping track of the current size. Uh, a node is just an inner class that looks like this, very similar to the one that we used in the linked list. A node is just something uh, that care. <coughs> a node is just something that carries a value, a string, and it knows about the next element in the list. Uh, so these are the major parts. Uh, we keep track of, these are our buckets, and a bucket is an array of these guys. So, when we are adding a string to the element, to our hash set here, we start by asking, give me the bucket number. The bucket number asks the string, what is your hash code? It makes sure that it is a positive number. If it is less than zero, I switch sign. And then I just use the simple hash function, which is the bucket length. This will always give a number uh, that is inside the array of buckets. Okay. So I ask it, give me the bucket number. It computes a position. Uh, I ask the bucket, give me the node in this position. And then I'm searching the list in the same way as we did in the linked list. Uh, if I find it, uh, uh, if I b found it in the list, then the element is found and I return without doing anything else. Otherwise, if I cannot find it, I create a new node and I insert it in this bucket. So, ask it, compute the bucket number, that means a position in this array. And then, uh, we are finding it should be in this position. Then we are checking this list. If we can find it in this list, then we are done. We shouldn't add it, a duplicate, so then we are just returning. Otherwise, what I'm actually doing is I'm inserting. I'm inserting it first here. I'm adding it. We are done. And assume now that we are keeping this uh, we are keeping uh, that the number of buckets are the same as the number of elements. All I have to do to make sure that I'm not adding a duplicate is this computation, which is not very lengthy. This one, search a list which should be of average length one, which is also very quick, and then adding it. 
independent of the number of data, it will always take us three basically computations to make sure whether we have it or not. Uh, it makes hashing extremely quick for adding, removing and asking, do you contain anything? Uh, once in a while, I have added an element here and the last thing I do here is I ask, is the size equal to bucket length? In that case, we start to have the same number of elements as the same number of buckets and it's time to grow. Uh, what we do then is uh, that we are the same approach as we used for the array list. We are making an array which is twice as long and then we are reinserting the element into this one. So if it is, if it is time to go, that means rehash if needed. What we do here is that we are rehash. We make a new bucket twice as long as the previous one. We iterate over all elements in this one and insert them into the new bucket. And then we are done. Then we have grown and make uh, our hash set is now can now work with twice as many elements. Uh, contains our set, do you contain this particular string? Well, we ask it to give me the bucket number and then we are walking through the list and see, do we have it here? If we find it, we return true. If we not find it, we are returning uh, false. Do you start to understand the basic idea here? This is, as far as I know, this is the quickest way of storing, looking up elements. If you start to have more than a million of things and you often need to look up and see do we have any one of these then you should use hashing. It is available in all the languages I know about. Uh, it is the quickest way of just checking do we have this one or remove it or add it. Uh, sort it is a nightmare. Uh, they are they can be everywhere here and if you should sort it then you must uh, visit all the nodes and iterate over all the lists here and pick out the elements and then sort them and then insert them in some clever way. So they are not suitable for that, but they are very good at looking up things uh, very quick. How about the break? Or oh, do we have any questions? Did you understand the basic idea? Yes? Uh, if you write hello, low? Hello. Hello. Hello, yep. Yeah, in my def the way I computed it, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, my idea of summing up the ASCII codes, it is not the best idea. Uh, you could probably, uh, a better approach would be to say, I take the ASCII code for this one, I take the negative of the ASCII code for this one, or something like this. Yeah. Or, or that you are, adding one to position one, adding two to position two, adding three to position three. <coughs> yeah, but it, it's not the end of the world if they are rather evenly distributed, but in one here we have a list of three. It, it, it will take me a bit slower. As long as they are rather evenly distributed. That's why I told this guy here, uh, he had already implemented the hash set. Uh, when you are, once you are developing your own hash set, it makes sense to check that uh, when you, you insert a million of elements. You go through this bucket and see which is the maximum size of the list. It should preferably be only two or three. It should not be 100,000 or something. Then you have a poor hash function. Yeah, um, I, I, as I also told you before the lecture here, uh, you should try to reuse the Java library methods. The, they are very good and they have come up with a clever way of associating strings with a uh, hash number. Uh, and uh, it's very difficult for us to make it improve upon this one, so use it. Any other questions? Okay. Then we take a 10 minute break.
Okay, uh, let's start again. Uh, uh, in the previous part of this lecture, we talked about hashing as one way of implementing uh, sets, uh, and the other traditional approach to implement set is something called binary search trees. Uh, this is an example of a binary search tree. Uh, the class in the Java library called Java U Util Tree Set, they are making use of binary search trees. But anyway, this is a binary search tree. Uh, it contains a number of nodes, and the topmost node here is called the root of the tree. The trees are growing downwards. Uh, each node has two children, the left child and the right child. And the rule, so this is a binary tree since each node can only have two children at the maximum. That makes it a binary tree. Uh, what makes it a binary search tree is this property. Left child is always smaller than right child. So if you take a look at all these nodes, they must always keep st stick to this property. Uh, right child is larger than, uh, this one is uh, larger than the left child, but smaller than the right child. And then I had a question here, would, where should seven be placed? Uh, we had a discussion here in the break and the, the recommendation was as, as, the left child as the left child of eight. Down here he would like to pos position it. Could it be anywhere else? No, it should only be at one place. Uh, where should I put an element? Uh, you should always start in the root. Oh, everything starts in the root. And then you compare it with this element. We would like to insert seven now. Is it smaller than seven? Is it smaller than four? Then I should go left. If it's larger, then I go right. So seven here is larger, I go right. Is it smaller or larger? It is larger than six, I go right. Is it smaller or larger than nine? Smaller, I go left. Is it smaller or larger? It's smaller, I go left. And I add it here. So you repeat the same pattern in all the nodes. You compare it with the current value. If it's smaller, go left. If it's larger, go right. In the end, the same will holds when we are looking for something. We are asking this tree, uh, do you contain the element 5? We do the same thing. We are looking for 5, uh, but it's larger than this one, it's smaller than this one, and I find it. So we start in the root and then we repeat the same thing in every node. In the end it will lead us to a position where we can either insert something or find something or do something somewhere. Uh, how do you implement a binary search tree? Uh, I would like you to think about how we described the linked list in the previous lecture. Uh, we have one class which the user is interacting with and we have one internal node which is our, our actual data structure. In this case, I should. In this case, we have a very simple class, the one called uh, int bst. In my example, int bst, it has a number of methods that we can interact with and it knows only about the root. You see here, it knows about the root and it has a number of methods. And when we want to add something to this one, and the root here is the one that I'm describing, and, and the nodes in this tree is described by this class. It carries a value and the left child and the right child. In contrast to the linked list, where these methods was well, rather complicated. In the case of the binary search tree, these methods are very simple. They are delegating most of the work to the, uh, to the nodes here. So when we want to add something, uh, we start by checking if the root is null. It means we have an empty tree. In that case, all we do is to create a new node and attach it to the node. Otherwise, we are delegating the question to the root node. Uh, add the five to yourself. And it will check this, as I did, it larger or smaller or the same, and it will construct the tree. 
but you always interact with the root node and the root node will uh, then ask add here if I'm asking uh, contain the contain method here it will check if head is null return false otherwise ask the root do you contain this particular number uh, so the methods in the int bst class are the trivial ones uh, it is the methods inside this one which are a bit more complex uh, i'm showing here the add method and this is actually just code describing what I've just presented, the approach for adding something. Uh, we are asking one node, add something to yourself. Uh, if it is less than the current value, then we should go to left. And the left is null, then we are adding it. Otherwise, we are asking the left child, add n to yourself. So a node keeps a value and it knows about left and it knows about right. Initially when we are creating them we have null down here, but on, uh, on demand we might add a new node down here. So uh, this is what a, a BST node looks like and this is how we handle it. We uh, want to add something to it. If it is less than the value then we might insert a new node down here, or we are asking the child down here, add n to yourself. We are delegating the question to the left child, and it will do the same thing. And on the same thing here, if it is larger than the value and right is null, then we are attaching a new node. Otherwise, we ask the right child, add this one to yourself. It will start in the root and it will drop down until it finds either that we have it or that we are inserting somewhere. Do you understand how it works? Uh, smaller than, do go to the left. Larger than, go to the right. Neither smaller than, larger than. It actually means we have found the value. Then we don't do anything. We stop the process. Any problems? This is the basic idea. All the methods in the BST, the node class, they are always recursive. It contains a lot of calls to itself. A method here, this one is recursive since it calls itself on another object here. Each method describes what we should do in one particular node in the tree. How we should handle it. And it's always, almost always a comparison with this one, decide whether to go left or go to, to go right. The contains method. I think it's okay. You know how to add? Now it's an exercise that requires paper and pen or a, a computer if you like. <laughs> but please sketch the corresponding tree if I'm inserting these numbers into a binary search tree. I'm inserting 22, 1941 in this order. What will the corresponding tree look like? Always start from the root. For the remote audience, I can say that I have recognized three out of 20 students that has paper and pen. Four, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Five. Okay, they start to pop up now. Six. Are you done with the first one? Are you done with the first? <laughs> Are you done with the first one? Yes. Please. <laughs> she needs it.
Do you agree? Yes. Anyone volunteering for the second one? <laughs> yes? <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, the first one is, of course, always the root. 37, 19 is smaller. Uh, 16, smaller, smaller, uh, 12, smaller, 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 uh, 14, smaller, 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 larger, uh, 32, no, uh, 41, 52, <coughs> 22, smaller, smaller, oh sorry, larger, smaller. Do you agree? So, yeah, it is straightforward. Uh, don't try to be clever and just uh, look at it and insert it here. Always start from the root and know the simple rules so you can never, you can never go wrong. Uh, uh, this one is on the It's embarrassing. I put this one in the wrong position. Uh, I did it four years ago and every year I'm thinking next year I must change, update this picture. But I never do it. First of all, error in the uh, first figure, 16 is at the wrong position. Uh, notice also that this is the same set of numbers as this one. That means uh, the, way, the order in which we are adding them will influence what they look like. Uh, also, we have, in this case, we didn't have any duplicate element, but the, our algorithm is, is that if we are coming to a node and we see the same number that we are about to add, we should just stop and don't do anything. Uh, looking up things, assume that I would like to ask, do we contain number 60? Uh, recursive method, that means we should only describe how do we handle one node. What are the rules in one node? For other no nodes are, is it the same as this one? Then we are done, then we have found it. Otherwise, if it's smaller, if it's smaller than this one, we should ask this new guy. If it's larger, we should ask this guy. That's basically it. So the implementation for contains we are asking the true whether they contain this element or not. We start by saying, if it is smaller than this one, and the left child is null, then we return uh, false, then we don't have it. Otherwise, we are asking the left child, do you contain uh, this one? And we do the same thing in the right child. It's always recursive. You can try to do this without recursion, and you will end up in trouble. It is difficult to do it. Uh, to traverse a tree and work with a binary search tree without recursion. Okay, if I'm searching for 14, one step, two step, three steps. If I'm searching for 34, I had to go there. I only need four computations to decide that 14 is in here. I need only three computations to decide that 34 is not in here. Now, uh, this one, the larger the three gets. Remember, if, if the three is balanced, that means it looks the same on both sides. Uh, in each step here, we are throwing away half of them. 
and then we are throwing away half of them. In every step we are reducing the number of available elements by half. And it will give something we will call a time complexity which is logarithmic. The two logarithm of n. Yeah, this is very efficient. It is not as efficient as a hash set, but it's much, much better than sequential search. Uh, so this one is uh, uh, looking up things and adding things. It's not as fast as a hash set, but it's much, much faster than searching through a list of elements. Have you seen this approach? Look at an element and then take only half of it before. Do you know about a search algorithm called binary search? We are searching for an element in an assorted list. Then we take a look at the mid element of the list and we see is it the same? Is this this one we are looking for? No, it's not. Is it larger? Yes. Then I know that I should only focus on the remaining part. And then I take the mid one in this one as well. This is basically the same thing. We are looking for something in a large data collection and by visiting one node I can remove half of the nodes already. And then I go here one and I remove a second half of it and I'm very quickly narrowing down uh, the number of elements until I find it or I can decide that it's not there. Okay, this is a bit more tricky. Find in search an order for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 that on average gives the fastest search. What should a tree look like to give a fast search? It should have a minimum depth. It should be balanced in some way. Yeah? And the slowest search is if, we are in, if they are only in one long, 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 long branch, then we have a linked list and we haven't gained anything. So how should I insert these, in what order should I insert these elements to get a tree with a minimum depth? I should start with which one on top? In the middle, the number four. four, number four. Yeah, that's the key. Once you realize that you should start with number four, you can usually work out the rest. I must start with adding four. It will give four as my root, and then I can balance the other ones. And then it should be. Which should be the next uh, number to be added? Three or five. Two or six, I would say. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, we want to have two over here and we want to have six over here. Then we can have one over here and three over here and five. So one possible order would be Two, uh, six, one, uh, three, five, seven. This will give a tree that looks like this. And this is the best tree from looking up point of view. It has a minimum depth. What will be, what will be the slowest search? What is the most problematic tree when we are looking up things? Well, uh, this order. What would its tree look like? Yeah, it will start with one on the top and then it will uh, be one long branch down here and we have in principle a linked list uh, when we are looking for things. So uh, one of the problems with binary search trees is that they work actually best if we are inserting things in random order. In this case, this is the simplest possible case. Uh, they have come up with clever ways of rebalancing their tree. There are algorithms that when you are adding elements and they start to look a bit strange, your three, they stop for a while and shuffle it and uh, make sure that they are balanced. Uh, and in this case, uh, uh, in this one, for example, one implementation is called the red-black tree. They are always balanced and they are making sure that we have a minimum depth at all times. That means we always have this quick 
look up for elements. Uh, remove is actually a nightmare. That's the problematic part. I have a tree and I would like to remove a node and I must shuffle it, shuffle it a bit here. And it's a bit complicated, so we are skipping this one. The basic idea is that you understand what they look like and why they are much faster than the sequential search. Oops, sorry. Uh, here I give you a three algorithm. This describes a printing routine. I'm applying this one uh, on the root node. If left is not equal to null, then call print on the left child. Then print the current value in this node and then print uh, the right child. So visit left child, print the value and visit the right child. If I apply this algorithm on the tree, this for example, what will be printed? Which is the first element to be printed? Two? Two? Uh, one. one is. We apply this one on four. If left is not equal to null, then we call print on number two. And then we call print on number two, and then we say if left is not equal to null, then we call print on number one. So it will go down left, 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 left. And then it will actually print one. It will check do we have any right side, no we have not, then we are done with this method in one and we are returning up to this call. Then we are printing two and then we go visit this one, print this one and then we are back to four. Yeah. It will actually print them in sorted order. This algorithm will print one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, eight, uh, eight, nine. Yeah. This, they are called a left to right traversal and we are printing in order. Yeah. They always look like this. Algorithms on the binary search trees uh, that are traversing the tree, they are going left and then do something and then go right. Otherwise they can go right, uh, go left and then do something. So I have other alternatives. Oops. Uh, left to right traversal, visit left child, visit right child. Right to left traversal, we start by visit the right child and then we take the left one. There are two different orders of traversing the tree. And when we are taking this approach, left to right approach, we start by visiting the left child and then afterwards we visit the right child. Then we actually go around the tree like this. So in the previous, my example that I, wanted, that I asked you about, we did a left to right traversal. That means we are traversing it like this. And if you take a look at this one, we are printing the value be between the visit of the left child and the right child. So we are printing the value between the visit of the left child and the right child. That means we are printing two here. 3 here, 4 here, 5 here, 6 here, 8 here, and 9 here. Take a look at this one. We start by visiting the right child, and then the left child. And once we have visited both children, then we are printing the node. Let's say that. If I should apply this one on this tree, it says, Take a right to left traverse. That means we should go in this way now. And the last thing we do in every node is to print its value. The last thing we do, here we would print 8, 9, 5, 6, 3, 1, 2, and 4. Did it make sense? Yeah. There is a terminology here. 
you take a look at the algorithm and, and they always say first go left and then go right or vice versa. It decides in which way we should traverse the tree. Either we go the left way and we go the other right way. And then we should do something, visit a node. We can do it the first thing that happens when we are entering the node after we have visited one node uh, or after we visited both uh, children. The, this one is called in order. When we do something in between visiting the children, this one is called post order. We are doing something, the last thing in the node. We have already visited the children and then we do something. Which one is missing? You can also do it pre-order. We do it the first thing we do when we enter a node. A pre-order left to right. What would it look like on this case? Please give it a try now. We do a left to right traversal. That means we are traversing it the way that I'm pointing out here. And the first thing we do when we enter a node is to print its value. It will start with Four, and then, and then, and then, yeah, and then, nine, eight, yeah. You start to get a hang of it. Yeah, so uh, quite often when people are talking about trees, they are using this terminology. We do a left to right traversal, we do a right to left traversal. And then we do something in order, pre order, or post order. And once you understand the traversal strategies and when to apply them, uh, they are, uh, it's a rather good description of how to solve a problem. Uh, often, if you go to Stack Overflow and you have a problem related to binary search trees, then the geniuses there will say, well, it's simple. You do a left to right traversal and then in post order you're summing the numbers up or something like this. This is typical terminology related to binary search trees. Do you have something here? Yeah. So uh, this example here that they were printed in order, it shows that the binary search trees, although we are adding the numbers in some random order, they will in some way be kept sorted. So, for example, find the minimum element, always pick the leftmost child. Find the maximum element, always pick the rightmost child. So, uh, asking certain questions to binary search trees <coughs> regarding sorting or minimum or maximum is rather straightforward. Try to find the minimum value in a hash table is an awful you have to go through all the buckets and all the elements and just go through them all and make sure that you find the smallest one. So this one, uh, the thing that makes them faster than a list is that they are basically keeping all the elements sorted. Okay, so binary search trees, this is the technique used in the tree set class in the Java library. Elements are placed in a special order. That means add, contains, remove is much faster than a list. Most efficient if elements are added in random order. This gives a balanced tree with low depth. Uh, they are always sorted. An in-order traversal gives a sorted printout. Easy to find minimum and maximum. We have uh, this uh, class in the Java library, it actually implements a specific interface called sorted set because it is basically sorted. If we are comparing it with hashing and the Java hash set class, uh, they have, this one must be balanced in order to work properly. The hashing must be an even distribution of the elements to work properly. If we have a poor hashing, they are not good. They are, require a good hash function. They are faster than BST on add, contains, and remove. However, they have no ordering among the elements. Printouts and iteration is not decided. If you're adding a lot of elements to a hash set and then you're asking it for iterator, it will come out in a, for you, a random order. Not the way you inserted them, not in any well-defined order. Yeah. Minimum, maximum element requires that all elements are visited. Finally, we have 
a rather seldom used class in the Java library called a linked hash set. It basically looks like this. They are using both, in order to implement a linked hash set, we are using both a hash set and a linked list. When we are adding an element to it, we are starting by adding it to the set. And if it is not already added, that means this one is actually adding its element, then we are also adding it to the list. So we are using the set to make sure that we do have a quick lookup, but we are also storing the element in a list. When you are asking for an iterator over this one, they will actually give an iterator over the list here, and you will have them in something called insertion order, in which the order they were first inserted into the list. So a linked hash set is something of a combination. It contains the quickness of a hash set, but it has something more of a predictable in ordering of the element. They are ordering in the way they were first inserted to the set. Yeah. Tie, since we are, up, we are maintaining two data structures here, uh, we need to update both. That means it add a tiny bit slower than a hash set. Uh, element store twice, it uses twice as much memory this one. We are storing, every element is stored both in the hash set and the linked list. Did you understand how this one works? And the properties. So uh, this one is some rather seldomly useful. However, the hash set, I'm using the hash set all the time when I'm programming. And when I want to keep them ordered, my elements, I use the tree set. Uh, here I have an example of a class that is suitable for both hashing and sorting or adding to a, uh, a tree set. Yeah. I have a simple class, just an x, y point, uh, two integers. We have a constructor here. We have a two-string method that prints the values. And then in order for hashing to work, I must override the equals method and the hash code methods. <laughs> and I'm saying that two points are equal if they have the same uh, x and y coordinates. Hash code, I should take two points and generate an integer. What is this? What is uh, this operator, x top y? It's called bitwise xor. Makes any sense? An integer. Mm -hmm. Bitwise operators, they work on the bit level. We have our first integer stored in one bit array here, and we have other integers stored in another bit here. They are represented as zeros and ones. You can take these two numbers and produce a third one by saying that bitwise or was it? Yeah. Yeah. True and false. One is true and zero is false. True or false, they compare this one and say, if one of them is true, then we should have true here. If one of them is one, we should have one here. If both are one or both are zero, we should have zero down here. So it is an operation that are uh, based on the bits representation of the integers. And it takes two integers and computes actually a new integer like this. And I'm using this one to produce a strange uh, number uh, for this one. It will generate an integer. I don't know sure which one it will be, but it will get an integer and it will actually spread them out rather nicely. But in general, you could have used x plus y, x times y. All you have to do is to come up with a, uni a number <laughs> representing these two data. Okay. Yeah, so these two methods, I'm overriding equals and I'm overriding hash code, it will make it possible me, for me to insert points into a hash set. It will work with hashing. And this one is required for the tree set. Compare to is the method that are used on arbitrary objects to compare them larger than or smaller than. 
it is basically an implementation of the less than operator. It should give a number. And uh, 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 the number is minus, it means this one. If it's positive, it means this one. If it's zero, it means that they are equal. So in order to insert a point and get them sorted, I must uh, implement a compare to method. And what I'm saying here is that uh, the default is just to compare the x values. It will say that this point, you can say that AB is larger than CD if A is larger than B. I'm comparing the only the first integer here. Uh, uh, if A and B, if A equals B, then I compare, no, sorry, C. If A equals to C, then I'm comparing B larger than D. So I base my comparison on the first number, but and only if this first number are the same, then I start to compare the second number. So which one is larger of these two, according to my definition of this one larger? What? Yeah, I said the first important number is the first number. So I start by comparing them. And this one is larger, then I say this one is larger. Uh, in this case, the first number is equal, then I will start to compare the second one, and then I will say that this one is larger. This is what I'm doing down here. I'm encoding it and saying, if they have the same x values, then I'm comparing uh, the y values. Otherwise, I'm comparing the x values. Anyway, this is my definition of how to compare uh, two, uh, two pairs, pairs of number. Uh, and if I have implemented them, then I can start to use the tree set. The tree set works by using this one. This is the one that they are using to compare whether they should go left or right. So finally, in my example here, I have the possibility to switch between the three different set implementations that are defined in the Java library. In this particular run, I was using the tree set, but I can switch between hash set, tree set, and linked hash set. Uh, and then I'm adding five points, I'm adding a number of duplicates, and then I start to print them. Uh, if I print the content, uh, if I add them to the hash set, they will come up in a random order. Uh, it will be different every time you run the program. If you're using the tree set, uh, then they will come up sorted with the smallest one first. This one is smaller than this one, smaller than this one, and so forth. And finally, if you're using the linked hash set, they will come out in the order they were first inserted. This one, this one, this one, this one, and then this one. In certain order. So there are three different set implementations in Java, and they have slightly different properties. One is one not ordered at all, but very fast. The tree is ordered, is sorted in some sense, but somewhat slower. This one is a combination. It maintains an order, the insertion order, but it's slightly, slightly slower than this one. But it stores the element twice, which requires a bit more memory. Depending on your situation, you pick one of them, but you should know their properties. Inside your head, you should see how it work, work, traverses the tree. You get a feeling for it. Yeah, a map. I will be very brief here. A map is another data structure in Java uh, that takes two values. The most important operations is the put and the get method. You are putting in a pair, 1 Jonas, 8 Jesper, 64 Jens, 4 Johan. I'm putting in pairs. The first one is called the key and the second one the value. Then afterwards you can ask, 
Give me the value for 8, it will print Jesper. Give me the value for 4, it will give you one in this case. So a map in Java is a collection of pairs and they are designed to be quick in the pairs are called the key and the value. And they are designed in such a way that you should be able to look up on the key. If you try to look up on the value, they are not very fast at all. Um, but they are designed, they are using hashing in the hash map to quickly look up the corresponding value for a given key. If you are doing a telephone book or something, give me the telephone number for a certain person. Then you would have the telephone number as the value and the identifier for the person as your key. Then you could quickly ask, give me the telephone number for a certain person. Yeah. So a map is a key value pair. Uh, they are generic in Java. That means you are saying that the first one is of type integer and the second one is of type string or whatever you like. Uh, the, Methods that are most commonly used, they look like this. Put a key and a value, get a key. Contains key, contains value, is empty. Give me the set view, a set view uh, of all the keys and a number of other methods. But remember this one, it's useful uh, when you would like to have this relationship. Associate one type of value with another value like this. And they are quick. Uh, once again, they came in three implementations based on hash, based on three, and based on this linked hash approach, having the same properties. Uh, the tree map is, uh, is sorted on the keys. So you can get them out in the key, uh, based on the keys properties. Uh, in the second assignment, we have only one exercise related to this lecture, but it contains five small parts. Uh, some of you have started with it. Transform an arbitrary text into a file of words. You should uh, remove all digits and whatever from it. You should read the text. Uh, we will give you a text as an example, but start with a smaller text. And identify words in it and save it in another file uh, called words.txt. Then create the class word representing one word. It should have method equals hash code and compare to and it should consider hello 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 as all equal. You should come up with a way of basically uh, implementing equals hash code and compare to that makes all this to be equal. You should disregard from uh, uppercase or lowercase. And then uh, for each word in this text file, create the word object and hash, add it to a hash set and a tree set. Then you can compare, they sh the size of them should be equal. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and the size here then represent how many different words did we have in the first file. And then I want you to implement your own versions of hash set and tree set here. And adding these words uh, to this one, they should give the same result as adding them to a hash set and a word set. And when you're iterating over all the words in the tree set, they should come out in alphabetic order, if you've done it properly. Did you understand? There are more instructions in the website, but did you understand the basic idea? Good. That's all for today. Any questions? Good. Good luck.